Welcome to Lesson 7.9. In this video, we'll be discussing logistic growth and logistic differential equations. In BC Calculus, there are two kind of special case differential equations that we cover. We have exponential growth and logistic growth. So for exponential growth, which we already covered in Lesson 7.8, the differential equation is dy dt equals ky, and the general solution to that differential equation is y equals ce to the power of kt. Now for logistic growth, which is our new topic in this lesson, we have two possible differential equations. They model the same thing though, so it's important to keep in mind that these are actually the same even though they look different. The differential equations are dy dt equals ky times l minus y, or we can think about it as dy dt equals ky times 1 minus y over l. Now the general solution for these differential equations, for either one of these, the general solution is y equals l over 1 plus c e to the power of negative l k t. This general solution is not one that you need to memorize as what's going to be assessed on the AP exam is most likely just the differential equation. We'll talk more about what the k, the y, and the l mean later, but for now, know that this is one of our other special case topics. In this graph right here, we see something that can be modeled by a logistic differential equation. So this is called logistic growth. We see that at the beginning, it looks like exponential growth. It looks like it's exponentially growing here, but then at some point it turns around and then it starts leveling, leveling off at a certain point up here. And the differential equation that we use to model this kind of graph, this kind of sideways S-shaped curve, is either this equation or this equation. Now, a couple things to note about logistic growth. First is that K is a constant, just like in our exponential growth, where K was also a constant. L is the carrying capacity or the limiting capacity. Those two terms are interchangeable. And the limit as t approaches infinity of y of t is equal to L, that carrying capacity. In this case, our carrying capacity would be equal to 100, because as t approaches infinity, as t gets bigger and bigger and bigger, y gets closer and closer to 100. Now, as t approaches infinity, dy dt, the derivative, also gets closer and closer to zero, because we see that graph leveling off, and the slopes of the tangent lines are getting closer and closer to zero. Some other things that are important to note is that y of t, our function, has a point of inflection, that means it's changing from concave down to concave up, or vice versa, at y equals l over 2. Remember, l is the carrying capacity, so we would take the carrying capacity and divide it by 2. In this case, we would be able to say that y of t has a point of inflection at y equals 50. And we see at y equals 50 on the graph, which is right here, that's where our graph is changing from concave up to concave down. That's going to be true for all functions that can be modeled by logistic differential equations. Now, this also means that dy dt, the derivative, has a maximum at y equals l over 2. This point right here is where our function is growing the fastest, so where the derivative is greatest. dy dt is equal to 0 when y is equal to 0 or when y is equal to l. So we see over here when y is equal to 0, it's a little bit difficult to see over here because it got cut off a bit at the edge, but you can infer that our derivative there would be equal to 0 because we would have a roughly horizontal line. Now dy dt is also equal to 0 when y is equal to l, so that would mean up here at y equals 100, and again that makes sense. Now that also makes sense in terms of our equation because if we bring this equation down here, we're saying that dy dt is equal to 0 when y is equal to 0, so when this is equal to 0, or when y is equal to l. So we would have 1 minus l over l, 1 minus 1 would be 0, so this portion would be 0. So having either of these portions be equal to 0 makes our derivative equal to 0. One of the biggest hints for this topic is to rearrange the given logistic differential equation that you'll see in some future problems to match one of our standard equations. So dy dt equals ky times l minus y, or dy dt equals ky times 1 minus y over l. Here are some examples of when we might use logistic growth to model a function. First is if we're talking about the spread of disease over time. The way we could think about that is at the beginning, when very few people are infected, the disease is not going to spread rapidly because there are so few people infected. But then, as more individuals start to become infected, the growth rate rises. However, once we get up here, a lot of the individuals have already had the disease, so it's not going to continue spreading. It's going to level off at some point, our carrying capacity. Some other examples of logistic growth would be population size over time or spread of a rumor over time. And again, those would all be modeled by an S-shaped curve like this one right here. Let's try a sample multiple choice question. The number y of individuals infected with influenza satisfies the logistic differential equation dy dt equals 0.1y times 8,000 minus y, where the initial number of infected individuals is y of 0 equals 10, and t represents time in days. 
what is the limit as t approaches infinity of y of t? Now keep in mind, if it's asking about the limit as t approaches infinity, it's really asking us for our carrying capacity. Because if we think about what that means on our graph up here, as t approaches infinity, y is approaching what value up here? Now it's not necessarily going to be 100 because this is just a sample graph. It doesn't represent this situation. But we're going to be able to figure this out using our equations. Remember, we want to get the logistic differential equation that they gave us into one of these formats. In this case, it looks like our equation is already in the format dy dt equals ky times l minus y. So what did they plug in for k and l here? Well, they have 0.1y, so k must be 0.1, times 8,000 minus y. This means that l must be equal to 8,000, and l is our carrying capacity. The limit as t approaches infinity of y of t will be equal to l, or 8,000. A shark population is modeled by the function p of t that satisfies the logistic differential equation dp dt equals p times 0.3 minus p over 40, where t represents the time in months and p of 0 equals 4. Which of the following statements is or are true? The first thing that I'm noticing with this differential equation is that it's not in either of my formats that I would like it to be in. So these are the two potential formats that I would like it to be in. dy dt equals ky times l minus y, or dy dt equals ky times 1 minus l, y over l. Now, I want it to be in this format so that I can easily identify y and k, because if I can identify my carrying capacity, that's going to make these a lot easier to deal with. I think I'm going to try to get it into the second format, so having this first term is a 1 right here. The first thing I'm going to do is rewrite this 0.3 as a fraction, and you will see why shortly. If I'm trying to make this 3 tenths a 1, what number would I have to factor out? Well, I would have to factor out a 3 tenths. So if I, if I rewrite this, factoring out that 3 tenths, I would have dp dt equals 3 tenths p times, and then, well, what would be right here? Well, we'd have a 1 right there, because 3 tenths divided by 3 tenths is a 1. But then what about this p over 40? If we had 1 40th right there, and then we divided out or factored out a 3 tenths, that's divided by 3 tenths, well, when we divide fractions, we really just multiply by the reciprocal. So this is really 1 40th times 10 thirds. Cross cancel the 40 and the 10, and that makes a 4 and a 1, so we get 1 12th. Therefore, right here, this is really minus 1 12th p, or minus p over 12. At this point, we have rewritten the logistic differential equation as this. We can clearly see that k is equal to 3 tenths and l is equal to 12. So now we can start answering these questions right here. Which of the following statements is or are true? First, we have the limit as t approaches infinity of p of t is equal to 40. Well, this should be equal to our carrying capacity, because as t approaches infinity, we should be hitting our carrying capacity. Now our carrying capacity here, l, is equal to 12, not 40, so choice 1 is not correct. I'm just going to sketch out our graph now briefly so we can better see what's happening. Choice 2 says the population is growing fastest when p of t is equal to 6. The population is going to be growing fastest at half of our carrying capacity, when y is equal to half of the carrying capacity, or at 6 in this case, because our carrying capacity is 12. That's where our graph is changing from concave up to concave down, so it's where our first derivative is the greatest here. That means that choice 2 is correct. Population is growing fastest when p of t equals 6. Choice 3 says p of t is concave down when p is between 6 and 12. We see that when p is less than 6, our graph is concave up, but then it goes to concave down when p is between 6 and 12. Therefore, choice 3 is also correct. So b would be the ultimate correct answer right here. A rabbit population is modeled by the function r of t that satisfies the logistic differential equation dr dt equals 0.2 r times 2 minus r over 250, where t represents the time in months and r of 0 equals 25. Now it's going to ask us a whole bunch of questions about carrying capacity and when it's growing fastest and when is the population increasing, but we can't deal with a lot of that until we have written our differential equation in one of these two formats dy dt equals ky times l minus y, or dy dt equals ky times 1 minus y over l. I think I'm going to try to get it into the format of the second differential equation. Now, these two are equivalent, keep in mind, but it's just written in a slightly different format. Now, you can do either. I think it's just a little bit easier to get it into the second one. So that means if I need a 1 right here, I'll need to factor out a 2. So if I'm factoring out a 2, that means that I have a 1 right here, and then minus 
r over 250? Well, if I originally had 1 over 250 and I was factoring out or dividing by a 2, it's divided by a 2 over 1, that's the same thing as multiplying by 1 half. So that's really 1 over 250 times 1 half, which is 1 over 500. So what I'm left with is 1 500th r right here, or r over 500. So now that I have this differential equation, and I'm just going to rewrite the 0.2 times 2 as a 0.4, now I can start answering some of these questions. First, it says, what is the carrying capacity of the rabbit population? I can see that they have replaced the L in the Y over L with a 500, which means that the carrying capacity of the population is 500 rabbits. Part B says, when is the rabbit population growing fastest? The population is always growing fastest when L is at half of the carrying capacity. So we will say the rabbit population grows fastest when there are 250 rabbits. Part C says, for what values of R is the population increasing? Let's sketch out the graph briefly to determine this. So we know that R of 0 is equal to 25. So down here at 25, I'll plot, that's where my Y of 0 is, or my R of 0. And then my carrying capacity is 500, so that's all the way up here. I'll have my point of inflection at 250. So I started here, point of inflection, and then the carrying capacity, it's going to be leveling off around R equals 500. So for what values is this population increasing? Well, R is going to be increasing whenever it is less than 500. It's increasing at different rates. First, it's increasing slowly, then quickly, then slowly again. But any time that R is less than 500, that means that our population is increasing. For this one, you could also say when R is between 25 and 500. However, that's kind of implied here because we say that R of 0 is equal to 25. So you really don't have a value where it would be less than 25. Part D says, for what values of R is the population graph concave down? Now, that point of inflection is going to tell us about concavity. So our point of inflection is when R is equal to 250, because that's half of our carrying capacity. The population graph will be concave down when R is between 250 and 500. There's our completed problem. Which of the following is a logistic differential equation? Let K represent a positive constant. For choice A, we see that dy dt is equal to ky. This does not follow the rule for either of our logistic differential equations. In part B, we have dy dt equals ky times 4 minus t. If this was a 4 minus y, this would be a logistic differential equation. But this right here, when we have a t in there, when we have our, when we have our independent variable there, that means that choice B is not correct. Now, choice C is also not correct because, again, we have that independent variable t here in place of y. Choice D also doesn't match with our logistic differential equations. But choice E, we have dy dt equals ky times 4 minus y. Yes, that is a logistic differential equation. In this case, we see that L is equal to 4. They've plugged in a 4 for L, our carrying capacity. A giraffe population grows according to the differential equation dp dt equals 0.2p minus 0.004p squared, where p is the number of individuals in the population and t is measured in years. It is known that p of 0 equals 11. That means we have 11 giraffes at time 0. At what value of p does the giraffe population grow fastest? If we are looking for the point where the giraffe population grows fastest, that's going to be half of our carrying capacity. And to find our carrying capacity, we're going to need to find L, so we need to rewrite our differential equation in one of these two formats. I'm going to go with the second one. First, I'm going to transition everything to fractions. That will make my computations easier. Now, to get my differential equation into one of these two formats, I'm going to need to factor out a ky. And if I'm trying to make this first term 1, that means that I'm going to factor out a 2 tenths p, since p is like y in this case. So if I'm factoring out 2 tenths p, that means that the first thing I have left here, if I have 2 tenths p and I pull out a 2 tenths p, I just have 1 left. But then what happens if I have 4 over 1,000 p squared and I pull out 2 tenths p? I know that there's going to be 1 p left, but how do, the, how do I then figure out 4 one thousandths divided by 2 tenths? Well, I'm going to come down below and do that. So we have 4 one thousandths divided by 2 tenths. And to divide fractions, multiply by the reciprocal. You can get rid of those zeros there, cross cancel. And we have 4 over 200 left. And that would really be 1 50th. Therefore, this is what, minus 1 50th p. And that entire thing is still equal to dp dt. Now, that 150th p, I'm going to rewrite that as p over 50. 
Now I have my differential equation in this format, ky times 1 minus y over l. Now I see that they've plugged in 50 for l. That means that my carrying capacity is 50. Now, don't get confused here because they did put 50 as an option here, but that wasn't what they were asking. They didn't say what's the carrying capacity. They said, at what value of p does the giraffe population grow fastest? The population is always going to grow fastest when you are at half of your carrying capacity. So when, when p would be at half of 50 or when p equals 25, which is choice b. Which of the following differential equations could be represented by this graph? So I see that I do have a logistic curve here. I'm seeing logistic growth because it's a slight S-shaped curve and it's leveling off at a carrying capacity of 50. So right away, I know that L is equal to 50. That's gonna help me figure out which differential equation this is. Now, looking at these, a few of these just do not follow the rule for a differential equation. So even though these are not in factored out format, I don't see any parentheses here, what would happen if I distributed this? So if I, if I took the ky and distributed this, I would have kyl minus ky squared. So I'm looking for a subtraction sign in between, which means that I can eliminate choices C and D pretty easily. Now, I also have a single y and then a y squared. So I think it's going to be choice A because I have a single p and then a p squared versus this one where I have the p squared first and then the p. So tentatively, I think it's choice A. Now I'm going to confirm this by checking with my carrying capacity. I need L to be equal to 50 in this case. So I'm going to try to rewrite this in my second differential equation format right here. So dy dt equals ky times one minus y over L. Now in this case, I would need to factor out six P over 1000 in order to make that first term be equal to one. So I have one minus, and then I had six P squared over 50,000. So I know I'm gonna have just a single P because I factored out one of the P's and then I had six over 50,000 divided by six over 1,000, which means that I was really doing six over 50,000 times 1,000 over six. Cross off those zeros, we'll cancel out three of the zeros and the sixes can both drop out. So we really just have one over 50. This means that I have one 50th P left right here or P over 50. At this point, I've rewritten my equation in the second differential equation format, in the second logistic differential equation format. So I have ky times one minus y over L. In this case, k would be six over 1000, and then I would have six over 1000p times one minus y or p over L. So L is equal to 50, my carrying capacity is equal to 50. That confirms what I saw in my graph up here, which means that choice A is indeed the correct answer. The rate of change of the number of bacteria in a petri dish, B of t, is modeled by a logistic differential equation, where t is the time in hours. If the carrying capacity of the petri dish is 4,000 bacteria and the rate of change of the bacteria is 10 bacteria per hour when there are 200 bacteria in the dish, which of the following differential equations could model this situation? This is a different style of question because in this case, they're actually asking us to make the equation. They're not just asking us to interpret a given equation. Now, since they have most of the answer choices written in the format ky times L minus y, that's the, that's the generic structure that I'm going to use when I create this equation. So instead of y, it'll be b. So I'll have db dt is equal to ky or kb times L minus b. Now, L is my carrying capacity. And they specifically stated that the carrying capacity of the Petri dish is 4,000 bacteria. So 4,000 is getting plugged in for L. They did not explicitly give me what K is, but they did say that the rate of change of the bacteria is 10 bacteria per hour when there are 200 bacteria in the dish. What that really means is that when B is equal to 200, dBdt is equal to 10. So we'll plug in 10 for dBdt equals, and then KB, well, B is 200, so we'll have 200K times 4,000 minus 200. Plugging in 200 for B again. And then we just solve for K. Then we can plug k back into this equation right here. And this would be the logistic differential equation that models that situation. So in this case, choice B is our correct answer because that's what matches this.